Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people and a write-in independent candidate for a senator from the state of Minnesota. And the message that I want to share with you today is going to be all about the emphasis given to making America heavenly, to make America like heaven on earth, and to bring us all closer to an understanding of where that path leads us. It's going to lead us down a path that sometimes facing truth cause some pain, but we have to do that in order to get the gain. So the things that I might share with you uh, during this moment, all of them might not be tasteful, might not go down easily, but it is designed for the betterment of it all. So bear with me if I say something that makes your stomach cringe. But here are some things I want to put out there. There are no good policemen. You've heard it said that not all cops are bad. Well, I want to say to you, there are no good policemen. If a policeman's job is to serve and protect, when an officer is abusing a citizen while another officer is present, they are both corrupt unless the one stops or prevents the improper conduct. When a police department have corrupt officers on force and the authority knows it and keeps these officers on force, the entire department is corrupt. And if the citizens protect such corruption, the entire city is corrupt, including the church. Where governments, and listen to this, permits poverty, crime, and violence, such governments are pseudo-governments. They are fake. They are pretenders. They are cons. They are scams. And the citizens are slaves, including the poor and the rich. Based upon the conversations that I've heard in the community, I know some people might take a different view on what I just shared with you, but I guarantee you it's true. A threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So says Dr. King. But is it just that in every nation there is the haves and the have-nots? The one percent. Is it just the crime and violence that results in response to this great national robbery? Is it justice? In the words of Churchill, all the great things are simple and many can be expressed in a single word, freedom, honor, justice, duty, mercy. These are single words, but they do not stand alone. So where any of these exist, it is understood the other follows. This serves as evidence that not only is America guilty, the rest of the human populations are guilty as well, insofar as these things are concerned. So why is it that nations claim to do great things except where people are involved? It never happens. The poor, they all, I mean, look at industry communications, how everything evolves. The rolling wheels made out of wood or rocks. Poverty, 
was back there. We got spaceships now. Still got poverty. Nothing changed. Justice cannot be for one side alone, according to the words of Eleanor Roosevelt, but must be for both, with justice and liberty for all. Here again, we have the results of a nation's policies that have rendered the community into different groups, the haves and the have-nots. We have Republicans and Democrats as enemies toward one another. What a divided house. How can this nation be at ease? How can this nation be healthy? How can this nation be well? When the two parties which supposedly represent the people are at war with one another. Whoever wins, the other loses. What kind of system of government is this? Plato says, justice in the life and conduct of the state is possible only as first it resides in the hearts and souls of the citizens. Cops killing unarmed blacks, justifiably, they say. Whites killing fellow employees and children gunning down other children. The KKK, skinheads, white nationalists, blacks, conservatives, liberals. There's much room for greatness in these situations. It needs much love. For now, these appear to be lost, lost nations. Isn't that something? The people, all of the crime and violence, all of the evil, ugly things that's going on in the United States of America is because of the little differences that you, the people, have within yourselves about one another. The little hatred, the bigotry, the malice. The lying, the lowdownness, the evilness, all of us got some of that in us. And that is what brought us to this point. That is what gave us Donald Trump trying to separate us from the rest of the world. This is what we talk about. We start talking about greatness, getting the biggest gun, want to be the biggest thing on the block. I am trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Tower of Babel did fall. Satan Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. Adam was kicked out of the garden. And evil will be kicked out of America when the people of America change their hearts. And how can they change their hearts except they know the truth when all they are hearing are lies? Albert Einstein says it this way. Matters of truth and justice, there is no difference between large and small problems for issues concerning treatment of people are the same. What's good for the gander is good for the goose. What's good for the one is good for the two. Happiness is good for some. Happiness is good for all. Who wants pain? Nobody. So it is to everyone's advantage to make sure that those viruses that can cause pain not even get started. It is everybody's advantage. Epicurus stated and, and forgive me if I pronounce that name wrong. There is no such thing as justice in the abstract. It is merely a contract between men. To wit, with men, each party is satisfied. If not, injustice exists. To wit, there will be and there will never be peace. And any force to stand up what is fake robs the doers of the beauty that truth and life is. In every situation I've mentioned here, everything is split one way or the other, up or down. Both represent losers. Men opening the door for the creator of men 
to inject greatness in single words like justice and freedom and duty and mercy and love and evolve and resolve to assure justice to both sides, treating each issue as one to be solved. The way to show respect for one another in this human involvement is to respect the invisible power, spirit called God. We return back to God, ownership of all that is God, and use all that is God, which has been provided for the benefit of the entire human race. All things needed for survival that are common amongst humans are guaranteed to every human. That's because God provided that should be the reality. And any policy, any government, any man that stands against that stands against God. The practice of justice anywhere is a threat to injustice everywhere. And so I choose the USA to change it into heaven on earth. And I need your help. Your immediate help is please contact your local media sources, radio, TV, paper, and ask them do they know anything about this message of changing America to heaven. And ask them the questions that you want to ask me. And let them do the research so the world, the nation especially, can find out that the conversation that I bring to you is all against the conversations you've heard in your lifetime. You've heard that America is the greatest. I'm going to tell you America isn't. Heaven is. And where is heaven? Heaven is wherever heavenly people are. Heaven, I'll say it again, is wherever heavenly people are. Let me say that one more time. I want that to sink in. Heaven is wherever heavenly people are. Now here in the United States of America, lately we have said we've never seen our nation digress to the state that it is in today. And it's been in some low places. And if it's worse than that today, we are mighty low. So we can say without doubt, it doesn't matter how many churches are filled, how many mega churches exist, that the truth of the matter is, heaven is where heavenly people exist. And since there is no heavenliness here, it must indicate that there are no heavenly people here. Now I know many of us think that we are heavenly people. That's because of what we've been taught. We've been taught to believe that what is heavenly, <laughs> well, we don't even get that. We've been taught heavenly stuff is stuff that is not heavenly. You know, watching people suffer, watching kids being separated from their parents as it is happening at the border, watching food stamp programs be cut back. Now you will worry about the food stamps. All of that is robbery. Watching the fact that people are losing health care and not even thinking about that. They think about the people who don't have health care, whose conditions are not covered. All of these things are all against heavenliness. And where heavenly people are, they give their lives to make sure that that is the conditions of life wherever they are at. And where these things do not exist, they got a responsibility. Their responsibility is not to keep from rocking the boat. Their responsibility is not trying to make sure that everything keeps running smooth. Their responsibility is to shake things up until things do run smooth. And the only time that things are running smooth is when everybody has a hand in the creative process of all those things that are essential to make this a beautiful, a heavenly place. And this means where we have access to education for everyone, unlimited and unrestricted. Health care from the womb to the tomb. Food, clothing, and shelter for everybody. And everybody got a job that allows them to create or to 
engage their hands in that process of creating all of these things that are so essential for survival. And not just that, but to engage themselves in all the other things like making spaceships, like digging itself into to the earth, finding out whatever else can be uh, recognized in this great, big, beautiful world that God has given us. Find out what else is in our minds, what we can imagine, and what other great things we can do. All of this to bring love and happiness and joy in our lives without the lying, the cheating, the stealing, and the killing, and the dealing with the world as we have it today. Rather than loving each other and protecting one another, they want to tell you, get money, and you can buy your protection. And you don't have to worry about the protection of others. All of that stuff has got to go. And I'm telling you, those of you who have pro, uh, progressed under the conditions, you've yielded, you've learned the story well, you've learned the script well, you've got bank accounts and you got nice cars and nice homes and stuff like this, nobody's knocking you for that. No, you did your role just like the poor did their role. Everybody did their role. It worked for you one way and it worked for the others another way. The thing of it is, is the situation is messed up. Anything that would allow you to come out the way you come out and somebody else to come out hurting the way they're hurting, something wrong with that process, everybody that goes into it <clears throat> puts something into it. And everything that comes out belongs to them, not some. And you can't say, I put so much into it and I, and I deserve more. And I don't care what you put into it. You wouldn't have come out with anything had these others not put what they put into it, regardless of how much it was. You would not. They would not. And both of you do because you did. And that's both of you. So everybody gets their cut. And I'm standing up. And I'm speaking for the power that you can't see, you can't touch, and you can't feel. But the evidence is all around us, the earth and all it is able to do, and you and all that you're able to do. But I want you to know the hell that we're living in today. Let me say this, and I want you to listen to me real well. The hell that we are living in today is not created by the devil. It is created by people who yields to that thinking process, who yields to that spirit. The hell that we live in today is because that's us. And we keep, we've been taught that pray and God is going to come out of the clouds and straighten this lie up. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the heaven that you say that you want to live in, where all of those things I just got through describing exist, you know why it does not exist? It does not exist because the people who want that do not exist. And we just said you don't exist because you have not been programmed to think that way. But I'm trying to tell you today is the day you, you begin. Because you can have everything you pray for, but you've got to jump across that line. You've got to get that broom and uh, jump across that broom, whatever the process is. And you're going to have to start treating people right. That is to honor the God you can't see and to hit be, be for the man that you can see beyond everything that you can do to make sure that he has a life of life of dreams. That's all. That's all you owe to man. That his dream of life is fulfilled. That's all you owe. You owe nothing else. Because when you give that, you've given your all. But your allegiance belongs to God. Not to a flag. Not to a nation. Your allegiance belongs to God. And only with your understanding of God can you love. When your allegiance belongs to a flag, you hate. When your allegiance belongs to a state, you hate. When your allegiance belongs to those two, you can become a murderer. A misfit. But if your allegiance belongs to God, you become a lover. You become a giver. You open up your borders. And then you let your love flow outside of the borders. So where people are running from can begin to see what love is like. And they can practice it. People don't have to come through your borders. They can stay at home. I want you to know that I'm standing up for God. Trump and the rest of you guys are standing up for something that has nothing to do with God. I'm telling you. Now, it is not to make you angry with me. Because I'm not trying to punish you. I'm not doing, trying to do to you what you guys did to Bill Cosby. I'm not trying to do to you 
what you guys are trying to do to all of these other people that have been embarrassed for, for their actions. Their actions have embarrassed the hell out of them. And they are as embarrassed as you would have been embarrassed if had, people had known back in the day what happened to you. But just like all the other demons in the world, you're not satisfied with justice. You want to get more than that. You want to stick the knife in and scrub. Put them in prison for years like that's going to change something. Get millions and millions of dollars from them like that's going to change something. Y'all better think about God and stop thinking about this world's way. It's taking us all down. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me this your time. Once again, this is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people, God's voice here on earth, and the candidate right in independent for United States Senator from the state of Minnesota. So if you go to those polls and you want to support heaven, in Minnesota and heaven in the United States of America, I guarantee you it's altogether different than what you get from Republicans and Democrats. Now, can you imagine me and us standing up before the nation talking about heaven on earth and the Democrats and the Republicans resisted talking about hell no, we don't want heaven. Bye-bye. <laughs>